Hi, and welcome to lesson eight here in our electrons unit, or actually our final discussion in our electrons unit. Here we're gonna talk about ions. What I'm showing you in this image are two atoms, sodium and chlorine, sodium in purple, chlorine in green, and the ions that they form. Let's go in and talk about what happens when an atom becomes an ion and why it involves electrons. An ion is an atom that has either lost or gained electrons. It is no longer electrically neutral as a result. If the atom loses electrons, it now has fewer electrons than protons, and so as a result, it's electrically positive. We see that with our sodium ion. Our sodium ion has 11 protons and 10 electrons, and so now as a result, its charge is going to be plus one. When an ion gains electrons, it's now gonna have more electrons than protons, and so as a result, it's going to be electrically negative. We see that with chlorine. When chlorine forms an ion, its ion is now going to have 17 protons, but now 18 electrons. And so as a result, it's going to have an electrical charge of minus one. That's what an ion is. It's just an electrically charged version of an atom, which comes from the gain or loss of electrons. Well, a good question could be, well, why does an atom gain or lose electrons? And the answer has to do with the stability of the atom. It's energetically most stable to have a full valence shell of electrons. We can see this by looking at our sodium example. The sodium atom has an electron configuration of 2-8-1, so it has one valence electron. When it becomes an ion, it loses that one valence electron, and now its configuration is 2-8. Having eight electrons as its valence is a much more stable configuration than having one electron. Another question that you might ask is what determines if an atom gains or loses electrons? And that really has to do with how many valence electrons it currently has. If it's closer to zero, it's going to lose valence electrons. Atoms that do this are called metals. If it's closer to eight, it's going to gain valence electrons. Atoms that do this are called nonmetals. This notion of trying to get to eight, either by losing your valence to go down to a valence that has eight, or by gaining the ones you need to fill up your eight, is known as the octet rule, and it holds true for every element with an atomic number greater than five. Below five, you're dealing with that first principal energy level. So you just want to add or lose electrons to get to that filled first principal energy level, which has two valence electrons in it. I know you think it really can't be that simple, and it is slightly more complicated than this, as we'll talk about in our next unit, but it's not really that much more complicated. If we look at the periodic table of elements, you can see the charges that the different elements have. Elements that have a positive charge have lost valence electrons, and they're what we call metals. Elements that have a negative charge have gained valence electrons, and they're what we call nonmetals. This is one of the major divisions in the periodic table, as we will discuss in our next unit. Another thing to understand is that if an atom gains or loses electrons, that's going to affect its overall size. We see this in our examples. Negative ions, which we're going to call anions, have radii that are larger than their parent atoms because they've gained electrons. Positive ions, which we're gonna call cations, have radii that are smaller than their parent atoms because they've lost electrons. We can see this in our original example. The sodium ion is considerably, considerably smaller than its parent atom because it lost that one valence electron. Similarly, the chloride ion is considerably, considerably larger than its parent atom because it gained that valence electron. We are gonna to need to be able to draw dot diagrams of ions. It's really not that hard. Positive ions are going to lose all their valence dots, and negative ions are going to have the full complement of eight valence dots. We're then going to put square brackets around the ion, and we're going to write the charge outside of the brackets. Here are two examples. Let's do lithium and oxygen. Lithium is going to lose its valence electrons, and so we're going to give it no dots. We're going to put brackets around it and write the plus one charge outside of it. Oxygen is going to gain two valence electrons to have the full eight. We're going to put square brackets around it and write the minus two charge outside of it. Sometimes you might see the number one omitted. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see lithium's ion charge written just as a plus, for instance. But if it's more than one, we will write the number afterwards. We also need to be able to name ions, and we'll talk a lot more about this later on in the course when we talk about compounds, but here are the rules. The positive ion's name does not change. If the positive ion has more than one possible charge, we have to put the charge that it actually has as a Roman numeral in parentheses after its name. This is called the stock system, and we will talk a lot more about this later on in the course. The negative ion's name is going to change. We're going to change the end of its name to IDE. Let's do some examples here. So lithium only has one possible charge, so the name of its ion is simply lithium. Iron, as you can see here, has two possible charges. So where iron has a plus two, we're going to call that iron, parentheses, Roman numeral two, to signify that it's plus two. And where it's plus three, we're going to call it iron, parentheses, Roman numeral three, to signify that it's plus three. Oxygen is a negative ion, and so as a result, we're going to change the end of its name to IDE, or oxide. 
It's important to remember that the only thing about an ion that changes compared to its neutral atom is the number of electrons and its charge. That's it. Nothing else changes. Not the number of protons, not the number of neutrons. Someone who's watching this video is going to forget this at some point in their lives. Don't let it be you. Thanks so much for watching our discussion about ions. Take a moment here at the end and make sure you can do the following things. Make sure you can explain what happens to an atom's electrons when it becomes an ion. Does it gain electrons or does it lose electrons, depending upon its neutral valence configuration. Also make sure that you can determine the ionic charge of specific metals and nonmetals. Finally, make sure that you can represent the ions of specific metals and nonmetals as Lewis dot diagrams. If you can do each of those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.